will be that Travis Ryan King took Joe Perez Jr.'s life in an act of revenge. That Travis Ryan King took Tori and Sanderlin's life in an act of revenge. He took Aquila De Silva's life in an act of revenge. He took the Ebony Grove's life in an act of revenge. Their families cannot get them back. And Travis Ryan King did this to punish them. And at the end of all of the proof, we will ask that you return a verdict that he is guilty of all 16 counts of the indictment. How long is it going to take? But I'm not trying to rush you. I'm just trying to figure out a mid-morning break. I don't have time, Your Honor, but not. I, I don't anticipate too long. All right. Let's get that. Try and get it in there. You've got a difficult job. You're just starting it. Information in the open states and made by the state this morning. And we can agree that it's tragic. It's tragic all around. And I want to say on the front end that nothing we say on our defense team is ever going to be intended to be offensive to the families of the victims. What you're going to see during the, the state's case in chief from the defense may seem awkward because we don't contest what happened at the wall. <clears throat> so if you don't see us getting up and doing a lot of cross examination of witnesses, there's a reason. As they've indicated, are going to show you videos. They're going to have eyewitness accounts. But that's not the only part of the story that's important. And as a jury in this case, it's important that you're able to understand the entire picture. Because when you sit in judgment of Mr. Ryan King and the facts in this case and you apply it to the law of this case, you have to understand Mr. Ryan King. It's the oath you took. It doesn't stop with what happened at the Waffle House and it doesn't start with what happened at the Waffle House. What the proof is going to show is that Travis Reinking is severely mentally ill. He's schizophrenic. And he's battled this for years. And you're going to hear expert testimony to talk about about a three to five year period leading up to that night. You're going to hear that Mr. Reinking was driven by delusions, paranoid thinking, auditory hallucinations. One of those delusions you're going to hear about began with a Taylor Swift concert where he believed that Taylor Swift was talking directly to him. And then he went on to believe he was in a relationship with Taylor Swift that he was her real boyfriend, that he was communicating with her and she communicating with him. And over time, you're going to hear about how that delusion grew and grew to where then it turns almost violent in his mind, that she's after him, that she's breaking in his house, that she's sexually assaulting him that others are involved, that the government is involved. You're going to hear that Mr. Ryan King was so convinced of this delusional thinking over years of time 
that he himself was reaching out to law enforcement, asking for help. People are coming in my home. They're breaking in my house. They're stealing my thoughts. When I go into restaurants, people are repeating phrases they would only know if they had read my, my private journals and my private thoughts. He believed it. He believed it wholeheartedly. He believed it so much, he went to Washington, D.C., thinking that he could get an audience with the President of the United States and get it to stop because he believed the government was involved. And this delusional thinking really rolled into him believing that Taylor Swift herself was a government agent. When he couldn't get relief in his hometown of Illinois, he started, he moved. He moved because he thought if he moved, it would make it stop. What he talked about is the the psychological rape, it would stop. The harassment, it would stop. So he moves. He moves several times. You're gonna hear testimony that at one point, earlier on, his family tries to get him some help. It doesn't take, he moves again. He ends up in Nashville. By that time, when he's in Nashville, he is completely untethered from reality. And he is driven by his delusion that people are after him. You're gonna hear a testimony that Mr. Ryan King believed that he could communicate with aliens and was regularly communicating with aliens. That Mr. Ryan King believed he could speak directly and to God. That he believed that normal people walking around, his reality was those people and there was no rhyme or reason that you could put logic to. Those people were out to hurt him and had been hurting him and were continuing to hurt him. And so on the night of April 22nd, 2018, you're gonna hear that Mr. Ryan King believed he was commanded by God to go to the Waffle House. in defense of himself and other people, that the people at the Waffle House, in his mind, were government agents, that were responsible for all the torment that he was perceiving over those years. You heard talk about what he was wearing or what he wasn't wearing. He was naked except for a green jacket, not a trench coat, not a long jacket, a waist length green jacket, completely naked, no shoes, no socks, no nothing. Green jacket, magazines, assault rifle. Why? You're gonna hear proof because that's what God said. God told him to do it that way. And that's what caused him to go. You're going to hear proof that he believed because they were watching his every move, that he was speaking about going to the Waffle House audibly in his apartment before he went. In his mind saying, I've been ordered by God to do this, but I'm saying this out loud and maybe people won't be there because they'll hear me talk because they're, they're listening. They'll hear me talk. And that will cause it to maybe even be closed. Now, that's not rational thought. But that was his reality. When we talk about choices, when you hear the district attorney say choices and choices and choices, what are choices based on? Perception. They're based on perception. What did he perceive? It's not rational. He wasn't 
in any sort of rational state of mind. But his choices led him to that Waffle House under those strict orders that he perceived to be from God. And he pulls into the parking lot. And you're going to hear proof that even in that moment, he is looking for a sign. He's not sitting outside trying to wait for max capacity in the Waffle House. He's waiting for a sign. Maybe if there's a, if there's a sign, I was wrong. Maybe I won't have to do it. But God's told me to do it. And again, in his sickness, his severe mental illness, he sees the number three on a hat. What he perceives as a walking by his car. It's described by the district attorney. It's a gentleman walking by the car right before Mr. Reinking gets out. And in his mind, that's the sign from God because in his mind, his terribly ill, severe mental illness, schizophrenic mind, three has meaning. And that's his sign. That's his sign. What you're going to hear in this case is that Mr. Ryan King's actions that night, they were a direct result of the delusions he was suffering because of his schizophrenia. He believed that God told him to do that. He believed that the people in that Waffle House were government agents. When you're thinking about choices, when you're considering this case, you have to consider the perception of that person. And we believe that when you do that, and at the conclusion of this case, you will be clearly convinced that Mr. Ryan King suffered from a severe mental illness and that he was insane at the time of these shootings. And you will render a verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity. Thank you. Statements of the attorneys. I will remind you that the statements of the attorneys are not evidence and they cannot consider it as evidence in, at all. We're going to take a mid morning recess at this point in time. We'll try and get back in here as close to 11 as possible. I know that it kind of may take you a while to relax and get yourself ready for the next round, but as soon as you're all ready, we'll come back in. All right. Please keep in mind that you cannot discuss anything about what's transpired in this courtroom. Whatever thoughts you have about the case, you must uh, keep them to yourselves. Please remain open-minded, and again, we'll get back in here as quick as we can.